Good day students, welcome to lesson 75. This will be the last lesson in this series in which I've tried to cover the content of the syllabus for financial accounting in full. I hope these lessons have been helpful and, you, and that all of you will pass your exam. In this lesson, I am going to mark exercise 5E and exercise 5F. Okay, let's start with exercise 5E. The first part of the cash flow statement, as you all know by now, is the cash effect of operating activities. And that consists of two headings. Can I say the first one is cash received from customers and the other one is which was an inflow of cash. And the other one, the second one is cash paid to suppliers and employees, which is obviously an outflow of cash. All right. Okay. We start with cash received from customers. We start with sales, which is 4862500, to And we get that amount in the income statement. We deduct bad debts. There was no discount allowed in this exercise. So we deduct bad debts of 8,900. So we're going to write that in brackets. We add trade and other receivables at the beginning of the year, which was 189,640. And we deduct trade and other receivables at the end of the year, which was 237,350. All right. If we, if we add those amounts, we get the cash received from customers, which is 4805890. Okay, the second leg of the cash effect from of operating activities is your cash paid to suppliers and employees. Okay, and you know by now that yeah, we, we are going to work with purchases, which will include the, the, the cash purchases and the credit purchases, but we will do the correction later on or later in the calculation with trade and other payables at the beginning and end of the year. All right. So we start with cost of sales, which is 3226100. We get that amount, obviously, from our income statement. We add the closing stock of 348 700 from the balance sheet and we deduct opening stock of 287300 okay so if we do that calculation with the cost of sales closing stock and opening stock we get the total purchases of 3287500 okay then we okay there was no discount received and then we are going to add trade and other payables at the beginning of the year. It was 574130 and deduct the trade and other payables at the end of the year, which was 538615. Okay. And then we need to add other payments. The other payments that, what we, that we're going to add are... Wages and salaries, which is 680,000, in other words, 680,000. And we also have sundry expenses of 590,000. Okay. And I'm not going to say again which expenses we're not going to add here. All right. We you know that by now. So, and that is also, that is why I've. Also written that remember there with the exclamation mark that you just remember which expenses not to add to this other payments where we add these expenses. Okay, so if we add the purchases amount, which was that 3287500, five and we add the trade and other payables at the beginning of the year, 574130 and deduct trade and other payables at the end of the year, which was 538612. And we add the other payments, which was 1,270,000. And 
That was the total. That was the total of the wages of six hundred and eighty thousand and five hundred and ninety thousand. That gives us one million two hundred and seventy thousand. Okay. So if we add that one two seven zero oh, zero zero zero, and the trade and other payables at the beginning of the year, deduct trade and other payables at the end of the year, and add the purchases, we get to an amount of four five nine three. O one five, and that was the cash paid to suppliers and employees. Okay, so we have cash received from clients four eight zero five eight nine zero. If we deduct the cash paid to suppliers, which was four five nine three O one five, we get an amount of two one two eight. Seven five, which is the cash generated from operations. Okay, but then we need to add and deduct other amounts, like the first one that we're going to deduct because it's an outflow of cash. Was the interest on borrowed money? In this case, it was interest on our long-term loan, which was seventy-two thousand. Okay, that amount we also get. The interest on the long-term loan is not given to you together with the other expenses. So it means that you've got to work it out, okay? So you're going to look in your balance sheet, look at the long-term loan, which was 400000 And if you multiply 18%, you see the long-term loan, 18% in brackets. So you multiply the, the 400000 times 18%. And then you get to an amount of 72000 which was the interest on the long-term loan. And there was also, if you look under the additional information, it says that no interest was prepaid or accrued at the end of the year. In other words, it means that the full amount was paid during the year. The other thing I want to say is that you, you can see on the balance sheet that there was an increase in the loan of 50000 Okay, since the end of last year. You can assume that that 50000 was bar borrowed on the first day of the, of the new financial year. In other words, on the first day, on the 1st of March, 20 zero, okay, 20XO. If, not that, if it was not the case, they should have given you that information under the additional information. For instance, to say that the money, the extra 50000 was borrowed, say, on the 1st of October or whatever the case might be. So if if they wanted you not to do the calculation for the full year, there would have been an information regarding that. That amount from the income statement. The other amount that we're going to deduct is drawings, which was 300,000. And we get that amount uh, under the notes the balance sheet or the notes to the financial statement. Okay, so we have those three amounts 212875 minus 72,000 minus the drawings of 300,000, and then we get a minus amount. In other words, that means it was a net outflow of cash from operating or of operating activities of 15912. Five. Okay, then we get to part two of the cash flow statement, which is ca cash effects of investing activities. The first item there is purchase of non-current assets. And where do we find that amount? We look for that under the or in the notes to the to the financial statements. And it is normally number two, fixed or tangible assets, the movements in fixed or tangible assets. Okay, if we look there at additions at cost, you'll see there was no additions, so we did not buy any fixed assets. Okay, so that amount is zero. Okay, the second item is proceeds from sale of non-current assets. Where do we get that amount? We also we're going to the to have a look in the fixed or tangible assets in that note under that note, and you'll see the carrying value or the disposals at carrying value. In other words, what was the carrying value 
of the assets that we sold during the year, and that amount was 120,000. Okay, now you know by now to get the, to know what was the cash that we received for that item or items that we sold. To get that amount, we must either add the profit on sale of fixed assets and deduct loss on sale of fixed assets. Okay, so let's have a look if if there was either a profit or a loss. If you look there, that they did not give you a income statement for this exercise. There was just that additional information. And I can see there is an amount of 14,200 for profit on sale of equipment. Okay. So we're going to take that 120,000 and we're going to add the profit on sale of equipment. And then we get to that amount of 134,200. Okay. And that is the only item under cash effects of investing activities. There was no investment that was placed or that was matured. If you look at the, let's just make sure, let's have a look on, on the balance sheet. Um, let me just see there. And uh, non-current assets. There was no financial assets. So there was no investment placed or matured. There was actually no um, financial. We this. Business does not have any financial assets on the non-current assets. All right. Okay, and then we get to part three of the cash flow statement, which is ca cash effects of financing activities. And you know by now where to look for that under current, under non-current liabilities in the balance sheet. Um, you'll find the, the long-term loan SIS Bank, okay? And it was 350000 at the beginning of the year, and the end of the year, it was 400000 In other words, the loan amount increased with 50000 okay? And that means it was an inflow of money because... We borrowed an extra 50000 Okay, it was an inflow of cash. So that is why that amount under cash effects of financing activities, it's just, it's not in brackets because it was an inflow of cash. Okay, so the last step that we need to do, we're going to add the cash effects of operating activities and investing activities and financing activities. All right. So it's the minus 159125 for the operating activities. We add the investing activities of 134200 and we also add the cash effects of financing activities, which is 50,000. If we add those three amounts up, we get an amount of 25075. Okay, so that was the net change in cash and cash equivalents. 25,073. Oh, sorry, 075. Okay. Okay, the last thing that we do is to check if our calculation was correct. How do we do that? We look in the balance sheet to see what was cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year. It was 62,540. And the, at the end of the year, it was 87,615. Okay. If we deduct the beginning of the year with the amount at the end of the year, we get an amount of 25,075. And that is exactly the same as the cash effects of operating activities, investment activities, and financing activities. And we know that our calculation was correct. Okay, now we have come to the last exercise in the book, which is exercise 5F. Before we continue, I just want to say or to do two corrections. There were two errors in the book on that 
page 368, exercise 5F. Okay, the first one was under additional information number two. It says in the book, the payment of the capital amount on the loan was done on 1 March 21. It should read 20 zero and not 20x1. So it should be the payment of the capital amount on the loan was done on 1 March 20x0. Okay, the other um, error was that under the number three amounts extracted from the income statement, um, you should we should add the water and electricity for 5360. 5360 for water and electricity. That amount was left out. Okay, so now we so now we can start with the cash flow statement. The first item that we need to calculate is the cash effect of operating activities. And the first leg under that is, you know by now, cash received from customers. How do we do that? We take sales from the income statement it was 899233. There was no discount allowed, so that is zero. We deduct bad debts of 6008. We get them out also from the income statement. We add trade and other receivables at the beginning of the year, which was 87619. And we deduct trade and other receivables at the end of the year which was 26870. All right. And then we add other income, which was in this case, we had interest on overdue debtors of 15870 and interest on fixed deposit of 50,000. If we... In this exercise, the income statement was not provided. Um, um, so we got some of the information under the additional information on um, on the exercise, under the required and additional information. We got some of the information there. And some of the other information was provided under notes, in the notes to the financial statements. So the amounts for the interest income and interest expense, we can we could find those amounts under the notes notes to the financial statements. Add the 15870 plus the 50,000, we get other income of 65870. All right, if we add those amounts, the sales deduct bad debts, add trade and other receivables at the beginning of the year, deduct that at the end of the year, and add other income, we get to a total of 1019844. And that was the amount for cash received from clients or cash received from customers. All right. Okay. Then we get to the second leg under the cash effects of operating activities, which is cash paid to suppliers and employees. All right, you know we start with purchases. How do we get that amount? We get cost of sales, which was 413.825. We add the closing stock, 328.740, and we deduct the opening stock, 439.514. Okay, if we do that little small calculation for the purchases, we get an amount for purchases of 303.051. Okay. Then we add trade and other payables at the beginning of the year, which was 85260. We deduct trade and other payables at the end of the year, which was 286750. Okay, and then we add other payments. Water and electricity was 5360. That is the correction that I've given you that should be added on, on that exercise 5 if under the expenses. Water and electricity, 5360. Wages and salaries, 
360,360,360,000 and then sundry expenses of 24,000. Okay, so if we add our other payments, we get an amount of 389,360. All right, so um, if we add those amounts, the purchases amount plus trade and other payables beginning of the year, less trade and other payables at the end of the year, plus other payments, we get an amount of 490,914. And that was the cash that was paid to suppliers and employees. All right. Okay, so we can transfer those two amounts to the cash effect of operating activities. Cash received from customers, you'll see there, 1019844. That was an inflow of cash. It was cash received from clients. Then cash paid to suppliers, we deduct that amount. It was an outflow of cash was 490914, all right? If we do that small calculation, we subtract the 490 from the 1019844, we get cash generated from operations, which is 528930, all right? Then we get the interest on long-term loan, interest on borrowed money that we uh, that we need to disclose separately on the face of the cash flow statement. That is interest on borrowed money. That was twenty thousand that we are going to enter there. Let me just see that we get that amount under. Now we have to calculate that amount. Um, let me just see. The payment of the capital amount on the loan was done on first of on the first of March 200. No interest was prepaid or accrued at the end of the year. So where do we get that amount? We are going to have a look in the balance sheet to see what the loan was. Okay, let me just get to the balance sheet. Um, long term loan fin bank, 25%. Okay, so we're going to calculate the interest on the 80,000 because that 80,000 was the amount that were, the loan was that amount for the whole year. Remember, we've changed that in the, in the um, additional information that it says the capital amount of, on the loan was done on 1 March. In other words, we, need, we can calculate the interest on the 80,000 for the whole year. So if we get... If you calculate 25% on the 80,000, you will get that amount of the interest on long-term loan, 20,000, which is written in brackets because it is an outflow of cash. Okay. And then the other item that we're going to add there is drawings. And you know by now where to get the drawings. We get it from the notes to the balance sheet. And you'll See, that was an amount of 240,000. And that amount is also written in brackets because it's an outflow of cash. Okay, so now we can add the cash effects of operating activities. It is the 528930, less 20,000, less 240,000. And that gives us an amount of 268930. Okay, so now we get to part two of the cash flow statement, which is cash effects of investing activities or investment activities. All right. Okay, so we start with purchase of non-current assets. Where do we get that amount? We find that under the notes to the financial statements, under fixed tangible assets, the movements, etc. Okay, so we find that purchase of non-current assets we find that under additions at cost. In other words, that means additions at cost means that was the price, the price that we've paid for the new assets that we bought. Okay. So in this case, it is 335,000. Okay. The reason why we write it in brackets is because it was an outflow of cash. It's money that we paid for fixed assets that we bought. Okay. The second Item under cash effects of investment activities or investing activities 
is the proceeds from sale of non non current assets. In other words, what was the amount that we received for the current assets that we have sold during the year? Okay. So we also get that amount from the notes to the cash flow statement. Oh, sorry, the notes to the balance sheet. Just under that additions at cost, you will see the disposals at carrying value. In this case, it's, well, it was 13600 That is what we got. But oh, that was what the carrying value was of the assets that we have sold. And as I've said in the past, how do we know what was the amount that we received for those assets that we sold? We take that disposals, the carrying value, we add profit on sale of assets and we deduct sale on, sorry, loss on sale of assets. Okay. So let's have a look at the income statement. Let's see. During the equipment with the book value was sold for 16,600. Okay, let me just see. Okay, as I said to you um, in a previous lesson, the book value and carrying value is the same thing. So if it says there under additional information, the equipment with the book value was sold for 13600 If you look at that note there, you also see the disposals at carrying value, 13600 Okay, if it was sold for 16600 it means that there was a profit of 3,000 on that equipment that was sold. You made a profit of, of, of 3,000, okay? So what we're going to do, we are going to take that disposals at carrying value, which is 13,600, and we add the 3,000, the profit, to get to the amount of 16,600, and that is the amount that we received for the, for the equipment that we sold. So we enter that under the proceeds from sale of non-current assets, 16,600. Okay, and that was an inflow of cash. So that is why it's, it's just written like that. It's not between brackets. Okay, um, and then we have a look at the investments. Where do we find that under non-current assets? As I said to you, financial assets. Okay, let's see what happened there. The financial assets at the beginning of the year, we had an investment in GG Bank of 25000 And at the end of the year, the invest investment was 50000 In other words, the investment increased with 25000 so what does it mean? We paid money out of the bank into the investment. Okay, so that was an outflow of cash because yeah, we paid it out out of the out of our bank into the investment account, and it was twenty five thousand, and that is why we have that investment placed twenty five thousand in brackets because that was an outflow of cash. All right. And then if we add, now we can add the cash effects of investing activities. It was that purchase of non-current assets, which was in brackets 335,000. 335, we add the 16,600 and deduct the 25,000. Okay, if you do that calculation, you will get an amount in brackets. In other words, it was a, like an Outflow of cash of 343400, and that is why that amount is in brackets because the outflow was more than the inflow. All right, if you just look at that 335,000, what we paid for the, for the assets that we bought, and we just again, we also placed and um, the investment also increased. That was also money that. Went out of the cash, went out of the business. So that is why, if you see that three hundred and thirty-five thousand and the twenty-five thousand, and the only inflow of money into the business of cash into the business was that sixteen thousand six hundred for that um, assets 
that were sold during the year. Okay, so that is why it was a net outflow of cash from investing activities of 343,400. Okay, so the third section or part three of the cash flow statement is the cash effects of financing activities. Okay, and you know by now that we are going to look for that if there was a movement in that under non-current liabilities. If we look at the balance sheet under non-current liabilities, you see there was a long-term loan financial bank or fin bank. At the beginning of the year, it was 100,000. At the end of the year, it was 80,000. All right. So what does that mean? It means our loan was 100,000 and the loan decreased with 25, only with 20,000 and it's now only 80,000. So that means it was an outflow of cash because we paid 20000 on that loan. We paid it back to FinBank. Okay, so that is why we write that payment of long-term loan in brackets, the 20000 because it was an outflow of cash. All right, so that is that was the only entry under the cash effects of financing activities. So, okay, we have the three totals now for the cash effects of operating activities, 268930. We have cash effects of investing activities, which is minus 343400. And we've got cash effects of financing activities, which is minus 20,000. If you add the 268930 less 343400, less 20,000, you get a negative amount in brackets of 94470. That means there was an outflow of cash or the, 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 the outflow of cash was bigger than the inflow. So we're supposed to have less money now in the bank at the end of the year than what we had at the beginning of the year. 94470 is in brackets. All right. So the last step that we need to do is to see what was our cash at the beginning of the year, cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year, and what was it at the end of the year. If we look at the balance sheet, you'll see that the cash at the beginning of the year was 43,594. Okay. And at the end of the year, it was minus 5876. Minus 50, 5876. Okay, so what happened? The cash decreased with 94,470. Okay, and that is exactly the same amount as what we calculated when we added cash effects from operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities which tells you that our, calcula our, cal sorry, our calculation was done correctly. Okay, so we have come to, I've come to the end of the lessons and I want to thank each and every one of you for listening to the lessons and I really, really hope that each and every one that listened to these lessons will pass your financial accounting in full exam, and not only your accounting exam, all the subjects that you are going to write. Good luck and best wishes. Goodbye from your online lecturer, Helene.